welcome everyone today we are going to discuss another topic that is called kinetic particle theory or kpt kinetic particle so what does kinetic particle theory states it has a lot of postulates and many of it you are going to study in a levels uh, but for the time being in O levels, you should know that ki kinetic particle theory states that molecules of gases are in constant random motion. We know that. We believe that. If we spend our lives thinking that yes, gas particles uh, can move randomly. They are in constant random motion. But what evidence do we have? If you just pause a moment and think about it, that what evidence do we have? How can we say that gas molecules are moving randomly? You might have heard of the term that is called diffusion. What is diffusion? Diffusion is movement of particles from high to lower concentration. Diffusion actually serves as the evidence that particles can move. This is the evidence that exists that tells us that particles, gas particles, gas particles are in random motion, are in random motion. So let's take the example of diffusion. Now uh, if suppose you enter, enter your home and you smell something. And you smell something nice you realize that you, that okay your favorite food is being cooked okay now if you think about it how does those aroma molecules reach you they reach to you because of diffusion because diffusion means movement of molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration the higher concentration will be the place where the higher concentration in this case the example that I'm quoting will be the aroma molecules will be most concentrated in the kitchen and they will be least concentrated in extremities of your home like your like the main door where you were standing so there can be many examples of diffusion another example would be if you sprayed perfume in one corner of the room you will your skin can easily smell it on the other side of the room as well so diffusion actually tells us that uh, it actually shows us that particles are in constant random motion but if you think about it on the one hand we are actually mapping out the direction of movement of particles movement of gas particles and on the other hand we are seeing that they are in random motion on the one hand we are seeing that they are going to move from higher concentration to lower concentration but on the other hand we are also seeing that they are in random motion how does how is how is that logical uh, the fact of the matter is that diffusion does not happen uh, in the sense that uh, it does not follow a fixed trend, a fixed pattern. Diffusion is actually random. The thing is that uh, particles move from higher concentration to lower concentration because they are more likely to move from higher concentration to lower concentration. It is much more probable for them to move from higher concentration to lower concentration. For example, if we talk about gas molecules uh, as per kinetic particle theory, so gas molecules, uh, there is a place that they have, there is a place where they are already concentrated. Obviously, they are going, they, they, they will have better chance of moving to a place where they are less concentrated. Right? So, about diffusion, mind you, is not limited to gases. They also happen in liquids. If you add, for example, a drop of color into a liquid, like in this example that you are seeing, that color slowly diffuses through the whole liquid. First, it is concentrated in 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 the in the area where that spot actually falls, and then it diffuses through the, through the extremities of the liquid, such that there comes a time that the whole solution becomes uh, the color of the drop. It it actually gains the color of the drop. So that's that's what diffusion is. So we are going to talk about uh, various factors that affect the rate of diffusion, how fast diffusion goes. So factors affecting rate of diffusion. First factor is 
molecular mass. That's pretty simple. Heavier the molecule, heavier the molecule, more difficult will it be for him to move. Lighter the molecule, easier can it move. So, increase in MR, MR means molecular mass, increase in molecular mass, increase in molecular mass will decrease the rate of diffusion will decrease the rate of diffusion and decrease in molecular mass will increase the rate of diffusion so and vice versa and the other factor that affects rate of diffusion is called temperature so if you increase the temperature it is commonsensical to think that molecules are going to have more energy so they are going to move more randomly and since they are moving more randomly basically they are diffusing faster so increase in temperature increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction and vice versa in the sense that decrease in temperature will decrease the rate of not reaction sorry rate of diffusion sorry and decrease in temperature will decrease the rate of diffusion so you can see vice versa okay so these are the factors that affect the rate of diffusion these are the factors factors affecting factors affecting rate of diffusion now, in this chapter there you are also required to know about effect of pressure and temperature on volume of a gas effect of pressure and temperature on volume of a gas Again, it is pretty commonsensical. If you increase the pressure, let's talk about the effect of pressure first. Let's talk about the effect of pressure. If you increase the pressure, what would happen? Molecules will come closer. And here I'm talking about the pressure, increase in pressure of the gas. Obviously, because uh, pressure only impacts gas molecules because gas molecules are the gases are the only states of matter gases is the only state of matter which are compressible only gases are compressible only their molecules can come closer so the um, impact of pressure when we talk about impact of pressure we talk about their impact on gases okay so increase in pressure means volume will decrease increase in pressure means that uh, molecules will come closer as a result volume the volume of the gas will decrease so you can say increase in pressure decreases volume because particles come closer because particles come closer and decrease in pressure alternatively will increase volume because Particles move further apart or move apart. Let's talk about effect of temperature then. We know that if we increase the temperature, if we increase the temperature, molecules will have more energy and they are going to move more randomly and they will try to access those places which they haven't accessed before. In if you can imagine that that excess in terms of volume so you can say that increase in temperature will increase will increase the volume because particles spread out because particles spread out this is by the way a two question two mark question 
they ask you the effect of temperature on volume of the gas you will say increase in temperature will increase volume because particles spread out if they are talked about if they ask you about decrease in temperature then you can say decrease in temperature will decrease the volume of gas molecule because particles come closer particles come closer right there are so some other concepts that you should be familiar with familiar with one is that uh, 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 that uh, I think we will discuss that in elements compound and mixtures we I'm going to discuss in that let's close this chapter over here that's all from this chapter now let's move on to its past paper so that you can have a better grasp on the concept that we have studied here let's apply these concepts Okay. So question number one says that which statement is correct? Energy is released when liquid changes into a when liquid changes to solid. When liquid changes to solid, then this called freezing. And for freezing, energy is actually released because freezing involves cooling, and cooling means taking the energy out of the system. So it is correct. You have to tell us which is not correct. So it is correct. So in this case, it is incorrect. Particles move faster in the gaseous state than in liquid state. Okay, that is correct as well. So it can't be the answer. The carbon atoms in gases meet in a further apart in solid diamond. That is correct as well because gases have molecules that are further that uh, that are further apart as compared to. So this is correct as well. The answer would be D. And also read there is a large increase in volume of a solid metal when pressure is applied to it. You should know that uh, the application of pressure does not change anything in the integrity of a solid pressure. The impact of pressure is not applicable on the volume of a solid because it is not compressible. Which process provides the best evidence for the theory, particle theory of matter? That is the fusion. Which statement is correct? So let me read the question first. The conical flask contains compound X which is present in solid, liquid and gaseous states. Which statement is correct? A gaseous, <coughs> a gaseous X molecule sorry, has a lower mass than a liquid X molecule. Okay, no, they won't have lower masses because they are the same substances liquid X, solid X, and gaseous X. They are X molecules, so their, mo their mass will be the same. Energy is released when X changes from liquid to solid. That's correct. Energy is actually released because from to turn liquid to solid, you have to freeze it, which means taking the energy out. So, answer would be B. Question number 4. Uh, nitrogen dioxide is a dark brown gas and is more dense than air. Since it is more dense than air, it means it will prefer to go downstairs. It will prefer to go down. A gas jar containing nitrogen dioxide is sealed with a glass plate and is then inverted on top of the gas jar containing air. So this has nitrogen dioxide and this has air. These are the two glass jars gas jars and they are separated by a glass plate so the glass plate is removed the air will come in contact with nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen dioxide is heavier than air so it will go down okay which one of the following correctly describes the colors inside the gas jars after a long period of time so since nitrogen dioxide is more dense than air so obviously it's going to be darker color over here and lighter color over here Okay. Which property of gas affects the rate at which it spreads through the laboratory? That is, is molecular mass. Because if the molecular mass is more, uh, the rate would be slower, and if it's the molecular mass is low, then the rate would be higher. Uh, which substance has particles in a disorderly arrangement at room temperature? 
So at room temperature, this is going to be A is going to be what? It's uh, at room temperature, it's going to be a gas. And B, C, D are going to be liquid and whatever. But this explains it pretty nicely because gases have the gases are most disorderly arrangement. And it is definitely going to be gas. Why? Because its boiling point is minus 80. So at room temperature, it will have turned into a gas. Okay. So at room temperature, A would have the highest disorder. In which conversion do H2O molecules lose speed? In which conversion do H2O molecules lose speed? Ice to water. They're turning from ice to water, which means the molecules are getting further apart. They are melting. So this can't be it. They are gaining speed. Ice to steam, they are gaining speed. Okay. Steam to ice. From gas to solid. To turn a gas to solid, you have to pass it. You have to turn it into a liquid first. And obviously, uh, that is the process that loses speed because steam is basically consists of gas molecules which are moving uh, a lot faster as compared to ice which are which is made up of solid molecules so the answer would be c our researcher notices that atom of an element are releasing energy why does this happen the atoms are radioactive okay Methyl amine and hydrogen chloride are both gases which are soluble in water. The gases react together to form a white solid. They, they react together to form methyl ammonium chloride. In an experiment, and by the way, that's a white solid. So, in an experiment to demonstrate rates of diffusion, the following apparatus is set up. Where will be the white solid formed? So, we know the MR is 31 MR of methyl amine, MR of HCl is 36.5. So this is going to move slightly faster. This is going to move slightly faster. Right? So it cannot be B because B is at the center. So A if A travels until here, so oh sorry, if methyl amine travels until here in, in that time, uh HCL would have just traveled until here. Okay, because this it's it's lighter. It's just lighter by around 5.5 grams. So uh, methyl ammonium chloride cannot be formed at B, which is at the center. It has to be formed at C. Slightly, slightly more towards HCl because HCl is heavier as compared to methyl amine. This methyl amine is lighter; it would have traveled more. That's why the spot is made towards HCl. So. Dodecane is a liquid at 25 degrees Celsius. How can you make this reduction from the data in the table? So dodecane's its melting point is less than room temperature and its boiling point is more than room temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius. Obviously it is going to be a liquid. So you can say because because its melting point melting point is less than 25 degrees celsius and boiling point is more do not write bp in exams you have to write full boiling point okay not full boiling point as in full boiling we have to write the uh, full spellings of boiling point and boiling point is more than 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So, okay. Butane melts at minus 130 degrees Celsius. Use kinetic particle theory to explain what happens when butane melts. You don't have to write the full Cinderella story over here. You just need to write some basic points. Okay. Use kinetic particle theory to explain what happens when butane melts. What happens? So, uh, basically, butane gains heat and its molecules 
start to move faster move faster and overcome and overcome the intermolecular forces between them and overcome the intermolecular forces between them okay whenever there is going to be a phase change there has to be an overcoming of intermolecular forces okay uh, obviously if or uh, yeah I'm talking about from solid to liquid to gases whenever solid changes to liquid liquid changes to gas there will always be overcoming of intermolecular forces okay okay and when gas is changing to liquid or liquid is changing to solid basically it's about giving in to intermolecular forces as in surrendering to intermolecular forces because they get stronger in this case they are getting weaker on the right hand side as we move to the right hand side intermolecular forces are getting weaker as we move to the left hand side intermolecular forces are getting stronger what happens to the volume of the gas if pressure is increased you can say what will happen volume will decrease volume will decrease because particles come together or molecules come together okay i think that would be all that i hope that you have understood this session stay tuned for more we'll be doing atomic structure in our next class inshallah allah hafiz